I welcome you all in this lecture which is lecture number 20 of the course process equipment design and here we are at the end of fourth week of this course. And in this lecture we will illustrate design of shell and tube heat exchanger using Bell's method with the help of one example. In this example I am going to discuss the Bell's method in detail with each and every step right. So, so, as far as design of shell and tube heat exchanger using Bell's method is concerned that I have already covered in second, third and fourth lecture of this week and uh, all those steps will be applied in this example. So, let us start this. So, here I am having example 1 and in this example we have 20,000 kg per hour of kerosene which exits the base of which exits the base of kerosene site stripping column at 200 degree Celsius and to be cooled to 90 degree by exchanging heat with 62,500 kg per hour of light crude oil which is available at 50 degree Celsius. A pressure drop of 1 bar is permissible on both streams. Allowance should be made for fouling by including fouling factor of 4 into 10 power minus 4 meter square degree Celsius by watt on crude side, meter square degree Celsius per watt on crude side and 2 into trans power minus 4 meter square degree Celsius per watt on kerosene side. Okay. So, carbon steel so carbon steel material is used for shell and tube and here we have a split ring floating head shell and tube exchanger and we have to design this exchanger using Bell's method. Okay. Now, if I ask you that uh, you are given the fouling factor of two fluids, right? So, so, which fluid you should allocate to shell side and which you should allocate to tube side. Okay. The fluid having more fouling tendency should be allocated to tube side. Right. So, if you see the less fouling tendency fluid is kerosene in this case because it has lesser dirt factor as compared to crude. Okay. So, that is basically 2 into 10 power minus 4. So, that is basically 2 into 10 power minus 4 which is which is less than that for which is less than that for crude stream. Right. So, kerosene so, kerosene should be allocated to shell side fine and here we have some more information like tube side like tube dimensions are given where in tube dimensions are given where OD of the tube, ID of the tube and total length of the tube are given along with pitch and that is along with arrangement and that is triangular pitch. We have to assume HI as 920 watt meter square per degree Celsius. It means tube side heat transfer coefficient is already given. So, we have to focus only on shell side because Bell's method is applicable to shell side only. Number of tubes are given as 300 and baffle spacing is given as ds by 5. Now, in this problem, heat transfer coefficient of tube side is already given. For example, if you are not given the tube side heat transfer coefficient, then for example, if you are not given the heat transfer coefficient of tube side and you have been asked to find out and you have been asked to design the shell and tube heat exchanger using Bell's method. So, tube side calculation you should carry out as we have discussed in examples of Kern's method okay. and then shell side calculations you have to carry out using Bell's method. So, let us start the solution of this example. As you understand that Bell's method first consider heat transfer coefficient on ideal tube bank and then different correction factors are involved in this. So, the first step is to find so, the first step is to find out HOC. Okay. So, we have to consider calculations for HOC and this HOC will depend on and this HOC will depend on 
us and gs value which is as per kern's method so first of all we should find out as value and for that we should find out so first of all we should find out as value and for that we should calculate baffle spacing and shell dia okay so to find out shell dia we should first find out the bundle dia depending upon the arrangement and the passes so here i am having one two pass and arrangement is triangular so you can consider k1 and n1 values like this so you can consider k1 and n1 values like this and these values and these values can be used to find out bundle dia because 300 tubes are given to you so bundle dia you have found as 474.1 mm and then you can find out the clearance so here as far as exchanger is concerned is splint so here as far as exchanger is concerned a split ring floating head is given to you and the bundle diameter you have already obtained as 0.47 so that will be somewhere here so you can understand the value from this graph and that value you can obtain as 58 mm and so you can calculate shell dia and further if you have the shell dia baffle spacing is given as ds by 5 so you can consider baffle spacing like this and then you can find out cross flow area that is as which comes out as 0.01132 meter square right so in this way you can calculate so in this way you can calculate the cross flow area and now you should find out velocity reynolds number gh factor and heat transfer coefficient that is hoc so velocity of shell side you can find considering kerosene flow rate because that is allocated to shell side only its uh, its its density as well as as value considering all these you can find velocity in shell side at bundle equator as 0 0.6723 okay now if you see this problem here we are already given the properties okay because the property because the collection of property we have already discussed in Kern's method in detail and in the similar line you can find the properties of the fluid and as it is the repeated calculation I am not going into detail of that I am already providing you the properties assuming that you can collect the property in the given method as we have discussed in Kern's method right. So once you have the shell side velocity you can calculate Reynolds number which you can found as uh, which you can find as 2.174 in trans power 4 so that is basically the turbulent region Prandtl number you can find out because all properties are known to you so this is not k this is this is not r it should be k okay that should be the thermal conductivity of the fluid so Prandtl number you can obtain as 8.046 so depending upon the Reynolds number like 2.17 so somewhere it will lie over here and here you can read this value so value will come um, almost equal to 6 so value of GH you can obtain as 5.98 into trans power minus 3 so considering all these values so considering all these value you can use this expression where you can neglect viscosity where you can neglect viscosity correction factor and HOC you can obtain as 1780.94 watt per meter square degree Celsius here this W should be capital ok so in this way you can find out HOC value ok now once you have HOC value we should find out other correction factors and let's see how and let's see how to find out fn fw fb and fl so let's start with fn value okay so here i am having fn calculation and you have already seen that uh, we are falling and you have already seen that fluid is falling in turbulent flow okay so we have to use the graph of fn for which ncv should be known to me okay so to find out ncv we should consider hb okay so first of all 
So, first of all I will find out H B using this expression ok. So, bundle diameter you have already calculated and the shell diameter ok. 0 0.5 into 0.25 because I am considering baffle spacing as 25 percent ok. So, considering all these value you can find out H B as 104.05 mm. Now, once you have now, once you have H B value, you can find out N C V using this expression. So, here you already know the bundle diameter which is this and uh, twice of H B I am considering and uh, at bottom we have P T dash and if you see we are having triangular pitch. So, that should be arranged in this way. So, total height between two rows should be 0.87 into P T if this is the P T. Right. So, considering this we can find out N C V as 12.839 and that I have considered as 13. Because whatever N C V I am obtained, because whatever N C V I have obtained that should be the complete number, right. Because N C V is the number of tube rows and that can never be in decimal, ok. So, what you have to do? You have to round it up, ok. N C V should be round up. So, whatever value you have obtained just consider next integer value of that and, uh, and so we can obtain N C V as 13 ok. Now, once I am having N C V as 13 you can use this graph and somewhere here you can find the value and if you see the value will be around 1.01 ok. If you find the value from this graph it should come as 1.01 f n value right. Next I have to find out f w that is window correction factor ok. Now, f w now to find out f w you should know r w because you are given the graph of f w and r w in books. So, R w you can consider as 2 n w by n t, n w is the number of tubes in window zone and n t is the number of tubes in bundle and that should be equal to 2 into R a dash ok. So, first of all I have to find out R a dash, this is not 1, this is R a dash ok. And we have already discussed that R a dash will depend on bundle cut. Okay. And bundle cut how I can define that? That should be H B by D B. Okay. So, all these parameters we have already discussed in Bell's method in lecture 2, 3 and 4 of this week. So, you can understand this. So, I am simply explaining that how to use that instead of explaining each and every parameter. Right. So, if I ask you what is bundle cut? So, that should be H B by D B. Okay and h b by d b values you all and h b by d b values you have already calculated and so you can find the bundle cut as 0 0.22 right. Now, if you have bundle cut you can find out r a dash from this graph. So, on x axis I am having the cut and on y axis I am having r a dash value. So, as far as cut is concerned your cut should be somewhere here because it is 0.22 and if you are considering this you can find out value of R a dash as 0.16 from this graph ok. And uh, once you are having R a dash 0.16 R a w you can find out as 0 0.32 just twice of that ok. And uh, once you have all these values and once you have all these value you can trace R a you can trace R w over here that should be um, 0.33. So, that should be 0.33 to somewhere here it will lie and then you can read the value from here. So, the value should come as 1.06 right. So, in this way you can find out window correction factor and now we will focus on bypass correction factor. So, as far as bypass correction factor is concerned, here we have the expression for F B where number of sealing strips are given as N S ok. So, first of all we should find out whether sealing strips are required or not and to calculate that we should consider N S equal to 0 in this expression and to find out F B value right. So, 
considering n s as equal to 0, we can find out f b based on a b and a s value. Okay. A b is basically the baffle spacing into d s minus d b. So, all these values are known to you. So, you can simply calculate a b. A s you have already calculated in a a s you have already calculated in h o c calculations and uh, here I am having n s equal to 0 and for that if so how we can find out whether ceiling strips are required or not. Okay. For that I will put n s equal to 0 and then I will calculate f b value. If f b value is coming more than 0 0.6 no ceiling strips are required. Right. And if this is the case where no ceiling strips are required, we have to find out correct f b value from this graph where a b by a s we have already calculated. Right. So, in this case f b we can find out by graph. Okay. Now, for n s equal to 0 if f b value is coming as now, for n s equal to 0, if f b value we can obtain as less than or equal to 0 0.6, we should use ceiling strips. Okay. So, so, in this case, if I am putting n s equal to 0 in this expression, right? so f b we can obtain as 0 0.479. Okay. So, in this case, you can understand that f b is coming less than 0 0.6, it means we require ceiling strips. Okay. So, how much ce so how many ceiling strips should be required? The maximum will depend on n C V value. Number of ceiling strips should maximum number of ceiling strips should be equal to or less than n C V by 2. Now, in this problem, n C V is given as 13. So, maximum n s value we can consider as 6. Okay. So, you can so you can consider different value of n s and you should stop where you will find f b value more than 0 0.85 right so let's see the calculations if i am having n s and n c v like 1 by 13 2 by 13 in this way so further we can obtain a b and a s which we have already calculated which we have already used in FB calculation in the last equation and here alpha value should be used as 1.35 depending upon the flow. Right. So, in this case we can consider this uh, term in the expression as lambda and we can further reduce the FB value and we can further reduce the FB expression like this right where we have the function of n s and where it is the function of n s and n c v. So, considering different n s values because maximum n s I can use as 6 okay, and uh, different n s value we can consider to find out f b value and you can see we can have all f b values. Okay. So, you can consider another approach also as we have already discussed in last lecture that ceiling strip should be used in pair. So, that value should be even. Okay. So, initially I should consider n s equal to 2 then 4 and then 6 instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, you can do that also. Now, if you consider different n s value where you should stop. Okay. As the guideline is f b value should be more than 0 0.85. So, you can choose four number as ceiling strips. Okay. So, n s should be four in this case because in this case f b value you can obtain as 0 0.896 which is more than 0 0.85. Right. So, n s you can fix as four. Fine. So, now we can calculate leakage correction factor. Okay. So, as far as leakage correction factor is concerned, we should use A T B we should calculate A T B and A S B. So, A T B and A S B expressions are given over here and here we require N W. So, N W should be N T into R A dash, R A dash we have already calculated and A T B you can find out using this expression where C T is basically clearance between 
hole in baffle and tube OD. So, this CT is always equal to 8. So, this CT is always equal to 0.8 mm. Okay. So, in this way you can find out ATB value. So, considering all these value and NW, NW you can find as 48. So, you can use this expression and you can find out ATB value as 6.03 into trans power minus 3. Right. So, here we so, here we should also consider NT minus NW, NW over here is 48, NT is 300 and next we have to find out ASB value and to find out ASB we should also consider CS okay, and theta B, right. So, CS how I can obtain? CS will depend on the shell dia and so, CS will depend on the shell dia. If you see your shell dia if you see in this problem the shell dia is 532, so it will fall in this range and in this range also. But I have told you if I have to, I have told you if I have the choice between pipe shell and plate shell, I should choose, I should choose pipe shell. Okay? So, this is basically the CS value. So, depending upon the shell dia, we can consider CS as 1.6 as you can see here okay and uh, next we have to find out theta b value and that theta b value we can obtain from this graph and this theta b value should be corresponding to baffle cut right so here i am having 0.25 because 25 percent baffle cut is there so you can simply see the value of theta b and that should come out as 2.1. Considering all these value you can find out ASB okay? and uh, this is also mentioned over here that HC by DS is 0.25 that is basically the baffle cut and theta b should be 2.1. So, considering all these values you can find out AL okay? and uh, further you can find out AL by D and further you can find out AL by AS and the value should come as 0 0.69. Okay. Depending upon that you can find out, so depending upon that you can find out value of beta L from this graph. So, 0 0.69 somewhere it will lie here and if you see this value it should come as 0 0.41. Right. So, considering all these values you can find FL value and which is coming as which is coming as 4965 okay so consider so considering fn fw fb and fl values you can find out over you can find out heat transfer coefficient in shell side by multiplying these with hoc value okay so you can consider hs as this so fb value at ns equal to 4 you can find as 0 0.896 this we have already discussed. So, heat transfer coefficient over shell side is 848.21 watt meter square degree Celsius. So, that is basically heat transfer coefficient in shell side. Now, we should quickly cover pressure drop in shell side. Okay. So, as you know that pressure drop we should consider in cross flow zone, window zone and end zone separately. So, let us start with cross flow zone. So, this is the expression for pressure drop in cross flow zone and delta P i is basically the pressure drop in ideal tube bank and that you can calculate using this equation. Okay. So, here U s you already know N C V 13 and Reynolds number you can obtain like this and then you can find out GH value as shown over here. So, depending upon this you can find out delta P i value as 1026.014 Pascal right and, uh, and after that you can find out F B dash as well as F L dash. So, F B dash for that you should consider alpha value otherwise all parameters will remain same. Number of sealing strip we have already fixed to 4, A, B and A, S value you can consider like this and uh, putting all these values in F, B dash you can find out bypass correction factor for pressure drop as 7 as 0 0.722 right and for cross flow zone 
and for a cross flow zone we should also find out leakage correction factor ok. So, expression of leakage correction factor is same only beta L dash value will differ fine. So, you can find out beta L dash value from this graph depending upon A L by A S and all these value you have already calculated. So, that comes out as 0.69 and based on that beta L dash you can obtain as 0.65 and so F L value you can consider as 0.2018. So, considering delta P i F B dash and F L dash you can find out pressure drop in cross flow zone as 149.49 Pascal right. Now, we have to now we have to find out pressure drop in window zone. Okay. So, this is the expression for pressure drop in window zone. Here I have to find out NWV and UZ and UZ is basically the geometric mean of US and UW right. So, first of all we should find out UW and that will depend on AW okay. and that will depend on AW and AW is basically the free flow area in window zone and that we can obtain by this expression right. So, here we have to find out R A and uh, so here we have to find out R A ok. So, once I am having bundle cut we can find out R A dash and once I am having waffle cut we can find out R A using this equation R A using this graph. Right. So, I think you can read this graph I am not going into detail of that. So, considering that R A and R A dash you can find out N W and you can find out N W and that you have already calculated previously. So, that should be equal to 48 and its value should be N 2 in it and its value should be equal to N T into R A dash right. So, considering this we can find out A W which is coming as 0 0.0241 meter square ok. Ok. So, once you have A W value you already know the mass flow rate in shell side that is of kerosene and density of the kerosene you can find out U W as 0.31568 meter per second ok. So, Considering U W as well as U S which you have already find which you have already found in HOC calculation. So, you can consider U Z as 0 0.4607 meter per second ok. And after that we should find out N W V that is the vertical tube rows in window zone and that should be equal to H B by P T dash. H B we have already calculated and P T dash is 0 0.87 into P T because I am considering triangular pitch. So, so considering all these values we can find out N W V as 5.0224 ok. And here you should keep in mind that N W V should be round off because N W V is the vertical tube rows which will never be in a decimal right. So, if you consider N C V that was also the vertical tube rows that we have made round up ok. So, N W V should be round off or you can do vice versa also like N W V should be round up or N C V should be round off because if both values you make round off or round up the number of tube rows will be different in bundle right. So, here we have considered N W V as 5. So, leakage correction factor we have already calculated. So, putting all these value in delta P W we can obtain pressure drop in window zone as 78.166 Pascal ok. And further and further we have to find out pressure drop in end zone and the expression for that is given over here where N W V is 5 and N C V is 13 delta P i we have already calculated previously. So, considering all these values you can find out delta P e as 1025.7 Pascal ok. So, total shell side pressure drop that is delta P s should be equal to 2 into delta P e because we are having 2 end zone delta P c 
that is the pressure drop in cross flow zone into total cross flow zones ok and similarly pressure drop in window zone into total window zone in shell. So, here we have to find out n b value. So, n b value that is the number of that is the number of baffles and that should be equal to capital L by L b minus 1. So, you can find out 45.98 as n b ok. So, because it is very close to 46 you can consider 46 also, but here I am considering 45 here I am considering 45 as the length of the shell is fixed ok. So, n b should be round off fine. So, here I am considering 45 as number of baffles. So, putting all these value in this expression we can find out total pressure drop in shell side as 0.12146 bar which is very less than 1 bar which is known as the permissible limit in shell side if you read the example. So, in this way you can consider Bell's method to design the shell and tube heat exchanger and uh, here you can find the references to study details about this method and here I am summarizing this video. So, in this video design of shell and tube heat exchanger using Bell's method is illustrated with the help of one example where tube row correction factor, window correction factor, bypass correction factor and leakage correction factors are determined and finally, heat transfer coefficient as well as pressure drop in shell side considering different correction factors are found. So, I hope you can use the Bell's method to design shell and tube heat exchanger effectively and that is all for now. Thank you.